Hello, and welcome to a Friday edition of Real Day Trading. Okay, it's Friday, so, you know, maybe there'll be more rants than usual. I have no idea. Anything could happen here. It was a good day for the 5K account, but let's go back a bit and start with the market. Well, the market today started off after a huge recovery on futures last night we were down like 60 70 points and then boom full recovery look like in the beginning of the day we were actually going to go green but then we had this sort of slow bleed down on spy right okay you'll see how that impacted some of the decisions we made but then all of a sudden we get a news announcement Invasion of Ukraine is imminent. And it's as if all these investors and institutions were like, wait, what? There, there, there's, a, there's a war maybe going on on there? Ukraine, you said? Oh, well, that uh, invasion is bad. We got to sell. Okay, sell everyone, sell. Uh, get the algos to start selling. Bam, 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 bam. Really? Really, you didn't know this shit? Of course you did. Of course you did. But here's the trick on this. Look at this. See this line, these two lines. Here's your upward sloping trend line. Here's your downward sloping trend line. Notice how SPY could care less about the 200 SMA here. Right through it. But when it hits this upward sloping trend line, it stops dead in its tracks. This is at around 439.75. Same thing up here. Looks like it's kind of respecting the 100, but really it's respecting this downward sloping trend line. Same here. Nope, nope, nope. Here's your real resistance. Here's your real support. Why is that? We all use SMAs, right? Because institutions switch their algos to recognize support and resistance at these trend lines rather than the traditional support and resistance that we think of at moving averages. That, and that's why we call them algo lines now. Usually started with a candle of, of strong volume, right? And so, here you can see it better that way, I'm sorry. Here you have it. If SPY drops below this line, Okay, now we're bearish. I have an alert set. And if it goes above this one, now we're, I've regained and now we're back on a bullish track. But for the moment, it's still in between the two. So this drop today, as, as severe as it seemed, still respected the algo line. And what we have now, what we have here, folks, is a market that is very news-driven. Why is that? Because the real foundation of the market, everyone talks about the market's inflated and the P ratio is out of control and these stocks are, are way overvalued, right? Oh, there's going to be a it's going to be a crash. Well, no, it doesn't mean that. You can be overvalued for forever. That's why RSI is such a bullshit measurement because you can be oversold or overbought for months on end. It's like, oh no, it's, overbought i'm gonna I'm shorting i'm selling and and, it, and then it keeps going up because it can be overbought for a while it's a crap measure but whatever i've been saying that forever and people still friggin' use it however this market right now the real value if you were to pair away all the crap is around 270 that's the foundation of this market so what what is it happens when you have an inflated market like this you have no real foundation to rely on it doesn't mean it crashes or doesn't crash it means it is very news dependent and you can either be news dependent on the bullish side or the bearish side you ever many times see news that comes out and look like oh this is bad news and the market would go up all right well that's news dependent on a bullish side the market is looking for any reason just to go up and sometimes it's looking for any reason just to go down. Right now, we're in a new cycle with the market where it's looking for any reason to go down. But it doesn't mean 
Oh, we got good unemployment numbers. Bounce. Oh, wait, inflation is worse than we thought. Fall. And that's what's happening. Now, that is a pain in the ass for technical traders because even though it's still respecting the extremes, these are the extremes, intraday, all this noise, really, really hard to decipher when a secondary state can come out and say an invasion is imminent and you get this, bam. And oil stocks go through the roof. Okay, so with that, with that right there, we, believe it or not, did well today. Let's take a look. Believe it or not, oh, I'm walking on air. I never thought I could feel so free. Flying away, winging a prayer. Who could it be? Believe it or not, it's just me. Remember that song, anybody? Anybody? Am I the only one? Greatest American hero? No? I don't know. Told you, it's Friday. Okay. This is what we did today. First off, 3700 We made $600. Count went up 20% today. And this mess we went up 20%. Well, that's a good thing, right? How did we do it? Well, we sold off Johnson & Johnson right off the beginning, right off the bat. Right, so there's Johnson & Johnson right here. Let's go to Johnson & Johnson. If we kept it, we could have gotten the full amount. But as I said, in the beginning of the market, we did not know. And as you see, Johnson & Johnson actually started up on a bullish trend. So I was like, I'm getting out of here. I'm taking the profit. I'm gone. Why risk it? Okay, so Johnson & Johnson, out. It's a profit. Would not change that. Don't, don't think it's a mistake. Next, we bought back MOS. Turned out to be a good idea because MOS kept going up. Great. We sold MU. Once again, a nice little moneymaker for us. Take a look at uh, MU here. Right now, we sold it right around here, right, right there. We could have gotten an extra 100 or 200 if we waited to up here, but wanted to take profit again when the market is in a position where I don't know what direction it's going and I am in profit, that's when I will take profit early. If I see a clear trend, I'll add to the, to the position. And if the trend's going against me, I will certainly take the profit if I have it. But here, when I had total ambiguity, I wanted to take profit, did not know where it was going to go. I would have had to have kept it and then sold it right at the top to maximize that. So again, I think right call to take profit there. There were two calls that would have been $2,000 swing that we'll get to though. And here's the first one, Adobe. I took credit of $4.14. We made around $100 per contract, so $200 on this short. It was a hedge, great. If we held it, you'll see Adobe right here continued its trend, Adobe, and it finished well below the put debit spread. We would have gotten the full credit, which would have been $10. That was around an $1,100 difference if we would have held it because we got $450, could have gotten $10. There were two contracts, $5.50 a contract, $1,100 swing right there in the account if we just held Adobe as our um, as our hedge, but we didn't. Um, if I could go back, I would have had more faith in this daily chart on Adobe and kept it. But because it was expiring um, the next week, I should have kept it. If it was expiring today, I understand, okay, take the profit, great. It was expiring next week, I should have kept this position. Um, and actually, since it was expiring next week, it would not have been, see, this is what happens on the Friday. The math goes all out of my freaking head. It, it would have been actually around a seven, $8. So instead of four, it was around a six, six, $600, $700 difference. But okay, we got rid of that and we took profit. So here we're taking profit, right? We're doing well. All right. 
Then we come up to, shit, I have no bearish positions now. I'm not hedged against anything. And I got this market where apparently um, Belkin can sneeze or, or, you know, someone could like, you know, throw a rock across a border and the market's going to just completely shift direction. So I'm a little wary at this point of sitting there without a hedge. I need a hedge. I got to hedge something. Something needs to hedge me. Well, FDX. I found FDX after searching and searching for the right hedge for me. There it was across a crowded room, FDX. Why did I choose FDX? Well, look at this. Remember we just talked about trend lines? Here's your upward slope and trend line on FDX. Oh, look who opened beneath it. That is a good short. That's the formation you want to see. It's below all of its moving average, but more importantly, it is below its algo line here. Yep, this candle qualifies. Great. Look at that. Bam, 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 bam. A huge support. And now, support no more. Gone. So we took that hedge. And that was our first one. What we did was we did a um, 227, 237 put debit spread. And it's expiring next week. I hate doing these spreads expiring next week. But again, I have very little choice but to do that. So, okay, we got this on. It's currently our hedge. Cost us uh, $2.73 debit to do it. That means we get $7.27 credit on this if um, next week we fall below 2275. We have three of these contracts. So that is um, around 2100 and then uh, 2181. $2,181 in potential profit uh, or yeah, in potential profit on this trade. So that's a good trade right there. And if next week, you know, you could literally just sell off all of our other position, just leave this on. And if we have a bearish week next week and this continues to fall, well, that will just bring us up to $6,400 in the account. Right, right off the bat. Just, there you go. Right. Um, by the way, that is, you know, we're doing a public challenge here. So I'm making a lot of trades also to keep everyone engaged with the challenge. But there is another more boring way to do this. And I can do it if, do it. Or, or turn it like that. I, can do, I can do it. I can do it for you. If um, you want Right, you just tell me, and I'll make one or two trades like this a week. It'll bring in fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a week, and within three, four weeks, we'll be at the ten. We can do that too, right? It's, it's certainly much easier that way, but it's going to be boring as shit. Just warning you, just telling you, but up to you. Then I got Snap, and I still don't know why. Why the hell? Did I go long snap here? Well, let's take a look. There's got to be a reason. I went long snap. And I went long snap at 7.32. 10.32 in the morning. Right here. Well, all right. It looked like snap was certainly had a strong upward trend here. It was looking good. That's some relative strength. And at that time, I believe, let's see, when I went, it was at 41.40. And yeah, we had just, yeah, we had just crossed over the 50 SMA and a strong upward trend. So here I have a stock that is on its way up and breaking through its SMA. Okay, that's why I went long. Now, now it all makes sense to me. We can even draw our, our algo line, and it's all the way up here, so resistance is still pretty far away, right? 
and there you go, horizontal. So what happened was, of course, the market drags it back down beneath there, and now this is acting as pretty strong resistance because you can also draw a little mini line here, right? And look at that. See that? Yeah. Not as strong. It's This is not a huge, a strong line. It's got a little bit of above average volume. This is the stronger line up here. But it was strong enough that with the market going down, Snap was not able to get through, right? So you kind of need at least a tailwind to get through these dinky little lines. You need a lot more than that to get through a stronger line, but you need something behind it. It didn't have it. In retrospect, probably should not have taken this trade, but I was looking, seeing green, 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 going through, alert triggered, market was strong at that point. Great, I'm in. I rushed in a little bit too much. So, oh snap. Yep, I wouldn't blame you from unsubscribing and never listening again because of that, that terrible pun. Okay. Um, BHG, I'm just constantly, you know, I took a profit on the $2.550 calls there and I'm still in the $5 calls. In fact, we now have um, 32 of those $5 calls. If BHG uh, goes up next week, we're going to be in great shape. And we can just take a quick look to BHG. Just a quick, a real quick gander. Gander on it. Look at that. It's still, it's still pretty damn strong. All right. That's a that's even a flag there. And I didn't even didn't even dip. So I'm thinking I'm thinking we're still good on this one. I'm thinking BHG, we're going to be. We're going to be great. Okay. Um, BKR. BKR, really great trade. Really like this stock. I had amazing relative strength here. BKR, look at this. First off, look at that breakout right there. Great looking chart breaking right out and right through resistance right there above average volume and today with the market down it did what other oil and energy stocks did because there is a potential disruption in that industry coming up with an invasion it launched and did not care one bit what spy was doing the worry here is if next week it's like oh we reach a diplomatic solution well that's Great. I mean, everyone wants that, I assume. Most everyone does. But our BKR trade here will be kind of screwed, and so will our Oxy trade later. So we have two trades in the same industry. Um, so that right now, for the moment, news dependent, is a decent trade. But I needed still another... Um, what do you call the damn thing? A hedge. Yeah, that's what I needed. I needed a hedge. So I'm looking for a hedge, right? Uh, well, before I do that, I take a lotto. And this was my other screw up. Good old Dave Y is actually pointing out this lotto. And his lottos are gold. So I got the damn thing. GPS. GPS. Right? You might think that stands for GPS, global position. No, no, no. It's gap. Right? Um, the, uh. The, the the rich person's uh, old navy and the poor person's banana republic or strike that and reverse it well gap really is in a bearish daily chart here um go to that there gap there it's really bearish daily chart here for gap and got this for six cents 1650 lotto well if I would have just held on to the damn thing, it was worth around 50 cents before we closed market. That was almost an 850% return. I got 20 of them. It would have been, uh, let's see, um, 50 cents each would have been 
fifty to five hundred thousand dollars. Um, yeah, would have been around thousand dollars profit. I took ninety dollars profit. So that I screwed that up. But I should have held. Why didn't I hold? Because there were two times here. You see here, two huge block buys of this stock which generally means institutions are accumulating it. And so I saw that. And then right here, I see it start going back up again. It goes through its eight EMA while the market was going down. And I thought, well, shit. If this all of a sudden becomes an institutional buy with these two leading the way, I'm going to lose the profit I had now. And at the moment, I had 50% profit on it. So I wasted a day trade for $90 profit. Could have wasted a day trade for a $1,000 profit. So this is the two that you're seeing, Adobe and this one. If I would have held them, both of those, um, we would be over 5,000 right now. I don't particularly regret not holding Adobe because we kind of made up for it a little bit with F FCX. But this one, this one was uh, stupid. Right, there's no other way to put it. Just should not have let this go. Should have kept it until right before close and cashed that in. We would have been doing great. Didn't do that, did I? No. Okay. Next, my other hedge was um, FISV. I got an alert on that one. Let's see why. FISV. There we go. Okay. Here we are. I got an alert here because it broke through its horizontal resistance right here. There it is. I had an alert set for a break of that, and it did. And we shorted it right there. Right now, that short is... We're up $98 on it. It's doing pretty damn good. Okay, great. That's another short. So I have that one, and I have FDX as my two shorts right now um then i got pm philip morris makes me want to have a cigarette and oxy right and i sold bkkt so first here bkkt a quick look sold it and bkkt there you go good thing i sold it because i sold it around here mine are going all the way down here it is a stock that can recover, but it's it, it's bumping up against its 50 here. And I did not think this would be strong enough for resistance. Turns out, <clears throat> can't get through. So for the moment, glad I got rid of that one. But look at, look at Captain Smoker here. All the way through, it's algo. I mean, this is really strong. Really strong move. Even when SPY was dropping, it had a little dip here, but continued on up. So we got two call contracts on those. That turned out to be profitable and doing well. And we also grabbed Oxy. Because for the same reason, SBKR, look at that strength. Look at the stock here. Filled the gap. This thing is primed to go all the way up. Now on this one, I took the 46s and I never take out of the money, um, out of the money calls. But here I did because this is a news driven stock and I feel like this one is going to jump up so fast that I have reason to believe it's going to get there. And those calls just compared to the volatility had not yet caught up on the pricing. So I'm pretty happy with those but if you notice the stocks that i have right now on in the portfolio all really other than the spec ones like bbig and um cfvi those are kind of spec bhg but bkr and oxy and pm those are three of the stronger stocks in the market right now. Those are our longs. And we got two good shorts 
FDX and um, FF, FISV. And this one here, FISV is just a straight put. So we get a lot more profit on that one. And the end result is we had a balanced portfolio coming in and a balanced portfolio going out. And we are slowly but surely scraping our way back and are now at 3,700. Okay, great. We're going to, I mean, this is the challenge. We'll just keep growing it. And at the end of it, we can show that, okay, we went down, we went up and never gave up and continued to grow the account in this ridiculous environment. And I'm sure by the time we're done, by then, SPY will have chosen a direction. But no one can ever say now that this was a challenge that, oh, sure, it was in a bullish market. Anyone can do that. Well, A, no. No, they can't. And uh, B, um, never use lists when speaking. And C, never use letters when making lists. So those are all good tips. All right. Well, um, this is the end of the video. I mean, I could rant here about a million different things. You know, I already gave a little RSI rant earlier. Um, I did see some people claiming, oh, look, I, I made 50% on my small account doing one or two trades. Great. You know what? Post all your trades in real time. I don't want to see any portfolio transcript, any Photoshop crap. Just post your trades in real time. That's all. Entries and exits. Can't fake that, right? Right. All out there, good, bad, and ugly for people to see. You can check the timestamp, see the stock. Oh, it was at that dollar. It was at that amount, that price. Just do that. If you do that, then come at me and tell me that you can increase a portfolio or not. When I when I did the 30K challenge and went from 30K to 60K, and I think that took five weeks, I had like two or three people say, oh, I, 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 made, I turned 10K into 200K in a week. Well, yeah, I mean, either you bought a bunch of out-of-money calls on AMC and got lucky, or you didn't do that at all. But either way, I don't care. Because what I'm trying to teach here is a method that is repeatable, that is sustainable, and that is consistent. Otherwise, you would not be able to do this full-time. If it is, you know, anyone who's making two, three hundred percent in a day, that is not a repeatable method. You need to be able to every day have and count on your profit. You might have off days, but at the end of the month, it balances out. So you can keep your anecdotes to yourself or you can post your trades in real time. I'll be, I will happily follow them and see how well you do or don't do. Other than that, I hope everyone has a great weekend. I know some of you got got hurt today by this market. And you need to ask yourself, why was my portfolio not balanced? Why was I all bullish? There was no reason to be. You had every reason to hedge. And learning how to hedge is how you survive markets like this. And you know where you can learn to hedge? You can read the damn wiki. Have a great weekend, everyone.